Will it machine? That is, I guess, a valid question. Hey folks, Winston for Carbide3D here. We were recently asked by a customer if corrugated plastic, or coroplast, could be machined effectively on a CNC router. And without first-hand experience or having seen any examples, I could only provide an educated guess. But in the spirit of self-education, I decided to give it a shot and bring you guys along on my learning journey. Here is how that went. Corrugated plastic is cheap, lightweight, waterproof, and has just enough structural rigidity to be used in things like outdoor signs or for prototyping purposes. But that low strength can also be an Achilles heel. Flexible or semi-flexible materials don't usually pair well with fast-moving cutting tools. They can move around, vibrate, tear out, or jam the cutter. To figure out how Coroplast would do on a CNC, I devised a simple test. I would cut out both some geometric shapes and also more complex shapes with lots of thin protrusions. Operating under the assumption that corrugated plastics should be cut similar to solid plastics, I aimed for a fairly high RPM of 22,000 and a feed rate of 100 inches per minute. I would cut out the 8th inch coroplast samples I had in one pass using an 8th inch cutter. Now, I don't know the best way to secure coroplast, but my gut said I should try and lock down the perimeter of the coroplast at multiple points, not just at the corners. So I first stuck my coroplast to a similarly sized sacrificial sheet of plastic with masking tape. This let me wrap multiple pieces of tape around the edges for a secure hold. Then I could throw a couple clamps at the corners. Overkill? Maybe. Did it work? Sure did. The first cutting test was done with our standard 102 end mill. And though my test program succeeded in cutting out a couple Carbide 3D logos and a dead fish, this wasn't a result I was happy with. As you can see, the end mill was continuously trying to rip the coroplast up off the table. This created a lot of vibration in the middle of the material, and would not be good if you were trying to machine an even larger piece of coroplast. If you had a vacuum table or maybe a lot of double-sided tape underneath the material, maybe the vibrations wouldn't be an issue. But that's not always practical. Plus, the top surface was kind of fuzzy. The obvious evolution of this test setup was to switch to a down-cutting end mill. The reversed spiral angle of these cutters pushes material down instead of pulling it up. I was hoping that this Amana cutter would keep the top surface cleaner and free of fuzzies. And it kind of worked. There was way less drama during the cut and the coroplast looked a lot more stable, especially in the middle. However, with that vibration gone, I noticed that during the end of each cutout, the end mill would often take a bite out of the shapes that I was trying to cut out. So I decided to add tabs to my program to keep everything in place, and I also cranked up the RPM to 24,000. And that did the trick. The cutout stayed in place. However, looking more closely, I thought these cuts are good, but they can be better. Since the coroplast wasn't pressed firmly against the sacrificial board, the downcutting end mill prevented fuzzies on the top surface at the expense of quality on the bottom surface, which led me to the conclusion that maybe a compression end mill would be perfect in this case. So I loaded up an 8th inch compression end mill in the spindle and tried again. This cutter, by the way, is straight off eBay, and I got it in a 5-pack. You can certainly and easily find more reputable ones out there, but even this sub $10 cutter did a better job than any of the other cutters that I tried before. The cut edges here are not flawless, but they're definitely usable and required far less cleanup than the other test pieces I did. Overall, I think either a compression end mill or a somewhat neutral, low helix downcutting plastic end mill would be the way to go for Coroplast. Pair a tool like that with high RPM, fast feed rates, and just enough tabs to keep things secure, and you should be able to cut whatever you want in this material. Hope you found this video useful. Until next time, good luck and have fun machining, folks.